Ravens going forward, not backwards. First question came from my boy, Jared. He said, I ain't Raven, my favorite and biggest Ravens YouTuber. Hey, I appreciate you watching the videos, baby. Thank you for supporting JL. Uh, I wanted to first take the time and give you your flowers, uh, your consistency, your willingness to be wrong. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> straight up, man. Straight up, man. Oh, uh, but <laughs> but yes, you're right. And your willingness to be wrong. And a lot of times we are wrong. You already know. But yeah, again, yeah, we ain't got no problem being wrong, man. Um, your knowledge of the game. Uh, and also the different perspectives you give the flock is the reason you're in the position you're in. Uh, I, I appreciate that a lot, Jared. Thank you, man. Um, <clears throat> that was just the first paragraph. Ooh, we got a while to go. He said the fact that even... <laughs> the fact that even as a longtime Ravens fan, you can disagree with certain aspects of the Ravens philosophy just fills me with joy. Uh, you're part of the fan base, not the cult. <laughs> you can be objective, and objectivity as a fan is my favorite asset you bring to the table. My 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 thing is, um, everybody everybody fans their own way. Everybody watches the Ravens. How do you want to watch it? Sorry, you got me like cracking up, man. Everybody, uh, they enjoy the Ravens. However, they want to join them, and that's fine. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Um. But I just, I'm not, I'm not a yes man. And I feel like just in life in general, if you're just surrounded by nothing but yes men, then there, there's not going to be any accountability. There's not going to be much advancement and you're just going to be stuck wherever you are forever. Like my, my wife, my wife, she will tell me like if, if we did a video or something, or we we did we might have added something to a video or taken it away or had an idea, and if it's a bad one, if she feels it's a bad one, she will tell me, uh, no, that no, mm -mm, that is not a good idea. I don't think that I don't think that's a good move. I, she will let me know quickly, honestly, and gladly, and I appreciate that. I, I love that. I love that. Um, so, because I, I, if people are just like, oh, well, everything you do is good, everything you do is great. No man, it's always it's, it's room for improvement for everybody. I, for me, I, I know be hearing people say it all. The, now I, I can't even say that for me though, because we got people on here. People hop on here and they just be mad for whatever reason. Be like, this sucks. That sucks about Engraving. That sucks about him too. Oh, he needs to do this. He needs to do that. He did. Cause I'm about to say I'm my own biggest critic, but <laughs> I can't even say that because so so many people hop online and they just be mad for no reason. So I I, I can't even say I'm my own biggest critic, but um. I do try to um, just look for small ways to improve stuff. Not anything over the top, not nothing drastic, not nothing dramatic, but I try to look for small ways to try to get better, um, really at, at everything. But specifically speaking about like the videos and stuff, I always try to look for ways to get better. But anyway, I'm, I'm going way left. And that's something, hey, a lot of people complain about that too. They say, Engraven rants too much. He talks too much. Like one guy... <laughs> One guy the other day, he, I blocked him already now, but I, he, uh, he commented on the video and he said, this was like, I'm recording this on Sunday, July 24th. He commented this on a video from the 23rd or 22nd, one of them two. And he was like, man, um, you just, you, you, you just like to hear yourself talk. You just like to hear yourself talk and then give us the information later. You need to give us the information first and then entertain us later. <laughs> I know he was having a bad Friday or Saturday, whatever day it was. I know he was having a rough day. Um, Cause it's like, I, again, you can't please everybody. You can't, you're not gonna make everybody happy with whatever it is you do. So I, <laughs> I just blocked him. Let him, let, let him move on, man. Everything ain't for everybody. But anyway, um, <laughs> I appreciate this, Jerry, because this, this, this is funny, man. Oh, but what I was saying, 
Because, you see, look at, look at me ranting again and just talking and not getting to the point. But, hey, that's me. Some people like it. Some people don't. It's okay. If you do, cool. If you don't, that's cool, too. Um, with the Ravens. Um, yeah, I, I don't agree with everything that they do. I agree with some stuff. I don't agree with some stuff. But I just feel like there's a way to present everything. There's a way to present what you agree with. There's a way to present what you don't agree with. And everything can be done with respect. We're not out here saying, oh, man, these guys, they this, they that. They da, 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 da. Well, at least no disrespectful names. Um, but it's like some people, they, they can do it. Some people can't do it. But we just try to uh, we just try to show people that it is possible to like stuff that the Ravens do and express it and dislike that stuff that the Ravens do and express it. It's all part of it, man. It's all part of it. It's all part of growth. It's all part of respect. It's all part of fun, too. And we try on here, we always say, well, don't try to take ourselves too seriously. We ain't walking around like this all mad and all tense and whatnot. Oh, these, these Ravens, they better not make me mad today. They better not upset me today. They better not make a decision that's going to ruin my day. And I try to tell people that, too. Please, nothing that the Ravens do should ever ruin your day. Football, it is a business. It's an entertainment business. And it's fun. There's a lot of entertainment that happens in football. And we love it. But nothing that, well, any team, whatever team you're a fan of, nothing that whatever team you're a fan of does should ruin your day. I understand getting into the moment. I understand we be all into the games and stuff. When the team wins, like, yeah, let's go. When the team loses, like, oh, man. But it shouldn't ruin your whole day. And I, I've had days like way back in the past where the Ravens lost, and it's like, oh, like, even in the playoff, playoffs especially. But recently, like playoff losses, elimination games, it sucks. But it's like, man, oh, well, okay, what's next? And I got some different experiences now too. Now, like the last playoff loss, who was it against the Bills? And that was just one of them games where it was like, man. Okay, because it got to the point when Lamar went out, it was like, oh, okay, yikes, there we go. Um, and then uh, there was that little, gl that little glimpse of hope where uh, it was the fourth and something, and Tyler Huntley threw the ball to Hollywood, but their connection was just a little bit off. Um, and after that was incomplete, it was like, okay, well, I guess this game's over. But it ain't, it ain't ruined my day, it ain't ruined my night. Um, there was the, uh, that was 2020. Then the previous year, 2019, I flew up there for the playoff game. F flew up, flew up there for the playoff game, went to it, dressed in extra warm clothes because I thought it was going to be cold. And boy, I was sweating because uh, it was hot. It was like Florida weather that game. Went all the way up there for it and they got dog walked. Did it ruin my night? No. Did it ruin my trip up there? No, I mean, it was an in-and-out trip. I went up there for the playoff game and came right back home. But, no, you, don't, you can't let that stuff ruin, ruin it for you. you can't, don't, don't let this, that entertainment, don't let it ruin, like, real life. So, that's it. I understand, like, people um, are very passionate about how they feel about team players, this and that. And that's cool. But... There should be, in my opinion, there should be like a cap on it. Um, there should be a limit on it. And, and for this cap, this cap is not cap. There should be like a limit on like, like, I don't know, man. I just, it's fun talking about it. And they, they do some things that get us excited and whatnot and it's cool and whatnot. Um, but yeah, just more so when, the because I've I seen it a lot. People say, oh, man, these Ravens, they, they ruined my day. I'm like, no, man, there's it's so much more important stuff out there that should be impacting your day. And I, and I understand, too, that watching football, it's like a nice little vacation. It's like a nice little getaway for like three hours real quick from whatever you got going on, whether stuff is going good for you in life or stuff is going bad for you in life. It's just, it's just a nice little quick getaway, some entertainment for a couple hours, football game. You just want to watch these skilled uh, athletes do their thing. For three hours. And it's fun. It's a whole lot of fun. And you got your ways how you think the game is going to go because of this and that. And the third, it's nice to see when you're right. And like my guy Jared pointed out, it's nice to see when you're wrong too. Hello, that's me all day. But 
it's all in fun. So and, and we can get uh we can get just just so involved in it and it's just but yeah, don't let it take over though. Like for them three hours, all right, cool, cool, cool. Then maybe like an hour after. You may be watching watching a little post game stream that we might be doing. Alright, cool. But then after that, it's all right. And what the post game stream serve as too, it's just a way to sort of ah, breathe. Sort of way to ah, talk about it. I talk about how I feel about it. We we talk about it together. We talk about different parts of the game, different things that happen in the game and whatnot. And then it's like, all right, cool. That's that. All right, well, Ravens either lost or they won or they tied. The season either continues or it doesn't continue. It all depends. So, but it, it should not ruin a day. But anyway, so all off season, I've been hearing Ravens fans and analysts alike express the want and expectations for the <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, to ex express the uh, the want and expectations for the Ravens to go back to their 2019 style of offense. Sigh. This is the NFL. You never go backwards. You only build off of your prior success. That's what literally killed off Kaepernick in the 49ers' success. Giro never evolved their offense. And you know what's funny? Um, after 2019... After the playoff loss, after the season was over, in so many videos, I questioned, all right, what's next? What now? How do the Ravens build off of what they just did on offense? How do you build off of that? How do you get better? Where do you go from here? Because that was my biggest question. I know so many, again, analysts like you mentioned, and a lot of fans too, they, they, they always say, oh, you, you guys complaining about Greg Roman now, man. Well, you, where were you guys complaining? Y'all weren't complaining after the 2019 season. I ain't hear you guys saying nothing then. Of course, nobody was complaining. Ravens just went 14 and 2. Lamar won MVP. Nobody was complaining, of course. But I was questioning, what are they going to do now? Where are they going to go from here? What's next? How is this offense going to evolve? That's a word that I always use. How is this offense going to evolve and take that next step? Because it was important. It was something that we needed to know. Besides, like, okay, what are they going to do next time they make the playoffs? Are they actually going to have a, a, a plan B or a plan C? That's a whole other set of questions. But my first question is, how are they going to evolve? Um, but anyway, he said, Giro never evolved the 49ers offense. Not only is that problematic in the development of Lamar Jackson, but it also couldn't even be done. Let me explain. Your two franchise backs are coming off of serious injury. Your franchise left tackle is coming off of missing two seasons from serious injury. The uncertainty at left guard. Nick Boyle is coming off a year where he was not himself, and we think somehow the Ravens drafted two mid-round tight ends. We will be able to top. Uh, we will. We would be able to be the top rushing team in the NFL. Oh, I, I thought you were going to throw in Nick Boyle also coming off of serious injury because he had been as well and he just yeah he wasn't quite right he said i don't think so and i don't think that should even be the goal i think the ravens should continue to build off of their success in the passing game spread it out run a high tempo offense that lamar has shown time and time again he is the most comfortable running mix in the run when the numbers are in your favor I have seen so many Ravens fans talk about this throughout last season. Why aren't the Ravens running more up-tempo offense? Why don't the Ravens run a more fast-paced offense? Because they saw when the Ravens ran a fast-paced offense, they had a lot of success. Last year, the year before, the year before that too. The Ravens, they, they can, and it's, you don't want it to be, it doesn't have to be fast-paced every draft. I'm not saying that, and I'm not sure if you are or not, Jared. But I don't think it should be fast-paced every single drive. But they can up this thing a lot. Because if you up the pace of the offense, you can really take advantage of defenses. You already have Lamar Jackson. And he is just a mismatch at quarterback, period. But if you run a more up-tempo offense, yeah, you got to be having success now. Because you don't want no Chip Kelly-style offense where y'all like boom, 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 and y'all going three and out. <laughs> you, see, you don't want that. Because your offense is going to be tired, your defense is going to be tired, and it, it could be bad. So you just, the tempo can increase a little bit. All these, these, oh, we got five, we got two seconds left. Set. Oh, false start. Set. Oh, delay a game. 
Oh, bad snap. Well, bad snap can really happen anytime, but you get what I mean. They got to get better at pre-snap. They got to get, because sometimes Ravens, we could talk about opponents doing this, that, and the third, but a lot of times Ravens can be their own biggest enemy. They can be their own worst enemy. And there can be this like lack of preparation. And we've been seeing this throughout the years. This is not a 2021 thing. We saw it in 2021. We saw it in 2020. We saw it in 2019. This was something that we've been seeing. I exclude 2018. Lamar Jackson was a rookie. They were doing a shift. That's when they were going through a shift. So I exclude that. But 20, we've been seeing it since 2019. That's an issue. That's a big issue. And that's, I always say that for Ravens, in my opinion, for Ravens to have the ultimate success, they just got to fine tune a lot of different small things. They ain't got to do this drastic shift. They ain't got to do these seismic changes and all. It's a bunch of little things. Just improve on a bunch of little things. And, and you could just do so much better. In my opinion, though. Not just my opinion. I know my opinion doesn't hold much weight. And that's fine. I hold much weight, but my opinion doesn't hold much weight. But that's okay. But it's just a, a lot of little, little small things that could make real big differences in my opinion but as far as i love how you said they should continue to build off of their success in the passing game i 1000 percent agree i do i do ravens their focus in my opinion should be the passing game I'm not saying they become this passing team i mean they could um but because it's like we know that they they're going to be able to run the ball they're going to be able to run the ball yeah, the offensive line straight as far as like health and stuff, you're going to be able to run the ball. You're going to. So much of defense's attention is focused on Lamar Jackson anyway, so that helps any running back that's back there. But as long as we got guys that we know back there, not just a bunch of random guys that we just randomly got like Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray, Le'Veon Bell. Even though Devontae Freeman, as the season went on, he got better and better. And Latavius Murray a little bit too. But having the guys that you know back there, it helps a whole lot. Um, I love how you brought out the point, and it's something that I haven't even really thought about, how you brought out the point of really taking pressure off of the backs that are coming back because they're all coming back from major injuries. And it would be kind of, and I know JK's dealt with major injury before he came back, obviously, but it's almost like it would almost be unfair to just expect those running backs to just pick up where they left off at. All right, you're back. Oh, okay. Same Gus Edwards you were before. All right, you're back. All right, same uh, J.K. Dobbins you were before. And there's Justice Hill, too. He coming off a major injury, too. Then Ronnie, Ronnie Stanley, too. We all, of course, hope that he's healthy, but we also hope that when he does get back, he is all the way back, and he is the good Ronnie Stanley. He, he is the, the Ronnie Stanley that got paid all that money. And this ain't about, like, pocket watching or nothing like that, but I'm saying that they paid him because they love his game. That's the Ronnie Stanley that we want to see out there. That's the Ronnie Stanley that we hope we get back. But I do love your point about just really uh, uh, trying to alleviate pressure off of those guys and put more pressure on that passing game. Because it shouldn't be a question, even though some people still question it. It shouldn't be a question whether Lamar can pass or not. We know he can pass. We done seen it. I saw somebody in the, in the comment section, they were like, oh, it's... We still wondering if Lamar can uh can pass can can throw the Ravens back. Oh, that's what they said. They said um, there's no way that Lamar could hang uh, with like or could come back. I think against or hang with Brady or Rogers. And they were like, if if he was down in a game, then he wouldn't be able to come back. And I said, wait, wait a minute. Now, why why would you say that? Because he's already shown multiple times, multiple times. That he can throw his way back into a game. Ravens have shown multiple times that they can be down multiple scores and throw their way back in a game. They've shown they can come back. It's crazy because with Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson always has something to prove to people. 
no matter what he's already proven. He always has something to prove to people no matter what he's already proven. It's like Lamar Jackson. If people have a Lamar Jackson prove it list, they'll have it hanging on the wall. And this is what they'll do. They got all this stuff written down. Oh, Lamar Jackson can't throw. Lamar Jackson can't come back from behind. Lamar Jackson can't come back from being behind multiple scores. So he'll do those things. And instead of crossing those things out, they'll erase them and just write something else. Oh, Lamar Jackson can't do this. They'll replace them with something else that Lamar Jackson needs to prove to them. Because they don't want to believe that he can do what he's already done. And they want to move the goalposts and whatnot. We, 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 we see it all the time. But anyway, back to the question. Um, I do believe, yeah, they should focus on the passing game more. By their coaching hires over the past two years, it seems as if they will. But we got to see. We got to see. We got to see. He also, oh, <laughs> we didn't even get to his question. He said, my question is, what type of style of offense do you think the Ravens should run this upcoming season? What should be the focus? What are you tired of seeing and what would you like to see more of? Oh, well, we didn't already cover this then. We didn't already cover this. What is the, the type or style of offense I think the Ravens should run this upcoming season? More passing offense, but just an, an offense that attacks defenses' weaknesses. And that sounds so simple. It sounds so simple. So simple. Well, for some reason, for the Ravens, it's not. I would like to see an offense, whoever you, whoever you got at wide receiver. I don't even feel like having a conversation right now. But whoever's going to be there at wide receiver, I would love to see the Ravens put those guys in positions to what made them draft them in the first place. I would love to see Ravens put those guys in positions to where it really utilizes their strengths, maximizes their strengths and maximizes their opportunities when they're on the field. I would love that. I would love it. I would love to see an offense where Lamar Jackson is not your feature back. Well, Lamar Jackson is not your lead rusher. And I know it's hard to like, Really just stamp the numbers like that and be like, all right, Lamar should only have X amount of rushing yards. I ain't saying that, but I just feel like I, I would love to see an offense where Lamar can put it in somebody else's hands a lot more often. And I know he's going to do those things that really help the Ravens out. And he's going to do whatever he can. He's going to do those special plays that we know he does all the time. And that's fine. I, I, but I just think... Um, a lot of it should not be by design, in my opinion. Because there's some, like, the RPO where he put it in J.K. Dobbins' chest or Gus Edwards' chest, and then he said, oh, no, I'm keeping. All right, you're going to have some of those? Cool, cool, cool. Just those, a lot of those plays where they line up and Lamar just snap, then he just runs with it from jump. Just to, 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 to ease up on those a bit. Just to ease up on those a bit. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh. Oh, uh, he said, what are you tired of seeing? Well, there we go. That, that would be it. I'm also tired of seeing this offense just not have any rhythm. That's one thing I'm tired of seeing. Something will be working, and it'll still be working. Then they'll be like, oh, you know what? Let's do something else. And I understand trying to keep the defenses off, off guard, but you, Ravens, a lot of times, they throw themselves off guard from doing stuff like that. Well, one thing that I'm tired of seeing is Ravens overcomplicate things. Overcomplicate things. I love how my, my guy JT always says, whenever we go back and forth and we talk Ravens, he always says, football is not that complicated. It's not that complicated. It's not that complicated. So, yeah, man, this was a uh, really fun question. <laughs> Didn't realize it was going to go like this. This, if we wanted to, this, this could be its own episode of questions from subscribers. It'd be one question from a subscriber. Shout out to Jared. 
But yeah, man, I, I, I appreciated this a lot. I appreciated the points you brought out. I, I appreciated uh, just everything. Thank you uh, very much. Very much, because <laughs> you gave us a lot to talk about um, with your question, the way you put things, the way you worded things, the points you brought out, um, the questions you asked. So we we appreciate this a lot. Yeah, this feels like a 